Lord Kamar Mayor, Councillor Nigel Yates, our Deputy Mayor, Councillor Adrian Lawton, and our Chief Officer, Mrs. Sarah Hayden. Thank you. In the absence of a minister this evening, Councillor John Jones is going to say a prayer to start tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Let us pray. Dear God, as we gather for this Town Council meeting, we ask for your wisdom and clarity. May your Holy Spirit guide our discussions and decisions, ensuring that we serve the best interests of our community. Open our minds and hearts to new ideas and help us work with integrity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start, we've got the usual preamble with regards to uh, YouTube. Uh, this meeting has been recorded and will be uploaded to the Biddle Town Council YouTube page. The aim is that decision-making should be transparent and in the public domain, which will involve more of our community and local democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to being recorded and for your image to be added to YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed are the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect the view of Biddletown Council. Please view the guidance on recording and public meetings policy if you need more information. Thank you very much. So just to confirm that the attendee, attendees will be named in the minutes unless otherwise instructed or requested. And we go on to item 34 on today's agenda, which is Staffordshire Police public participation. Uh, have you got anything to say? Well, uh, <laughs> step forward, step forward. People have a lot of uh, issues with, uh, with motorbikes and the off-road motorbikes section of the past. Uh, and I say in the past because due to the positive by the planning to we've actually seized several stolen bikes. Um, I do know we're still having an issue with on church road playing fields. It was an issue the other day. They, they tend to go just... We are limited into, into what we can do. Uh, however, as you may be aware, we have got a new road traffic policing team uh, as of the 1st of October, um, and they're looking into coming over as often as they can. That's okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, let's take some questions. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, um, obviously good news about the, the motorbikes. Uh, I, I believe, if I'm correct, social media says you managed to confiscate three. Um, yes. Up yes. Up to, uh, however, as you've just mentioned, it doesn't completely... It's it it doesn't uh, completely cure it. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, where I live, I do see them from time to time, and I do call it in every time as well. Um I know it's it's not easy. They're there. They might be there for five minutes and gone. Yeah. And it's virtually impossible for you to be there as quickly as that. But I do think that, uh, and I said it, I think, a month ago or two months ago, uh, about the possibility of just firing the drone off up in the air. And you, the police must have that. And the difficulty, the difficulty we have with, with, with the drone is... Try and get it from it's generally in, in Staffordshire, so the headquarters. Unfortunately, it's, it's by the time we've got it over here, like I say, the motorcycles have dispersed. Um, we'd be likely to get there quicker than the drone. Well, I think the, the answer there is take, take, take the equipment to where the problem is, not leave it where. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if there's a problem in Stafford where it is, then I, I understand yeah. it. But yeah. if there isn't a problem where it's not it's not being used in Stafford, then bring it to where the problem yeah. is. And I'm not saying it's going to cure it. I'm not. But I think at least it would give it would give residents some reassurance that the police. Uh, and I'm not saying you're not taking it seriously, yeah. but the, the the perception from the general public is 
that the police are not doing enough. Right? Yeah. And that's not a criticism from me. That's criticism oh, that I have. We hear it as well. We hear it as well. Unfortunately, we have we have we have this issue, and then there we are the moments we, we've got this issue all over the cities with stolen motorbikes, off-road motorbikes. And we are again with the road traffic team, we are obviously going to try and deal with it as quickly as we can. Yeah, very quickly, can I just say, yeah, thanks for everything that you are doing, yeah. and also I think that the police deserve a lot of credit for the recent drugs bust that's happened in Middle. Uh, really does show that the police are, are being proactive, and I just wonder, or you can't comment on this, how much local information is coming from general public to help in that kind of operation. So that it must have come, the information must have come from somewhere. So we, we do get a lot of what we call intelligence. Yeah. So whilst we're out on patrol, we are approached by members of the public in the area who give us intelligence, not just on that particular address, but on other addresses as well. That then goes onto an intelligence log and then it's looked at by PCs who then collaborate at all. And as you said, we... we... Thanks, that was the yeah. result. Thank you. I'm sorry, was with. Just, um, just to give you a heads up, uh, at the weekend, first time in a very long time, we had one of the little treasures on a bike in Halls Road and on the playing fields. Uh, came up twice, uh, hadn't seen in midweek. But we, ha we haven't had anybody for a long, long time, but <clears throat> nobody got fed up in church row. We don't get a lot, yes, yeah, so we don't we, we haven't really had a lot of reports for the motorbikes on Halls Road. So it, it may be that. They potentially moving up there because there isn't all that they use the tracks a lot as well, don't they? Yeah. And so uh, we, are, we are obviously observing that area as it well. It was the same biker anyway. Yeah. Of course, no plates, bark alarm, yeah. and hold. That's a different matter. Two faces and identify them. Yeah, thank you. Okay. OK, just one uh, additional point. Obviously, you're aware that we had two windows broken on the high street. Uh, yeah. Um, very, I, very sad incident. I, I did speak to Ben Adams about it this morning, Police and Crime Commissioner, yeah. to see if there was any sort of wider intelligence, because it seemed a, a strange incident. It didn't seem... Yeah. Uh, it seemed almost planned in some respects. So I, initially, I made a lot of the, the initial inquiries into that. We're still making inquiries about that. Um, and we have... We're looking at a positive outcome. Right, OK, good. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much. OK. okay. As uh, no other hands are raised, so thank you very much for your time. You. It's, it's, you. it's very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. So moving on, I am uh, pleased to say that we're going to have a presentation from Stoke-on-Trent Food Bank on current projects of two running. Over to Caroline. Thank you. Thank you for this evening. Um, um, I apologise, it's only me. It should have been me and a colleague. So both of my colleagues that are busy elsewhere. It's very busy time of year for us. Um, I've only done two school assemblies today, so that's very quiet today. <laughs> so um, we've prepared this for you, and there are local statistics on it. Uh, so my colleagues have been busy on that for um, we work with local referral relations, and one of those is the town hall. So, it's the town hall. We've also got some figures on who is coming to our two local food bank centres, which are two churches locally. So we've got that for you. So let's go on. This place. Okay. So, big question: When you think food bank, what do you think? Could you come up with some words and try and give people that? <laughs> what do you think? Then? Do you think of, you know, what, what does it sum up? Does it sum up a church? Does it sum up a, does it sum up a parcel? Does it sum up a person? When do you think, so, what do you think? It sums up desperation. Sums up? Desperation. Yes, exactly. I always yeah. think sad, to be honest. Why should yeah. we need them? Mm. In the sixth richest... Vital resource. Vital resource. Yes. Good, good, good. So let's pop up some words and things that have come up. Some people, you know, think of their local church that does it. They don't know that we have 16 openings throughout the area. Uh, we're volunteering. Some people know somebody who volunteers. Uh, some people think of charity, uh, donations, hunger, media, what the media says about it, emergency food, and it might be sensationalism by the media. Or uh, poverty, which is, you know, it, which is unfortunately a fact. Um, <coughs> but 
Circle Trent Food Bank is actually about ending the need for food banks. Uh, sorry if I'm uh, talking to some of the already conversed, you might know this, but not everybody knows this. So I thought if I go through it, um, and obviously speed me up at the end because I could talk about it all night. Let's have a look at the next bit. Okay, then. So I'm going to go, who is Circle Trent Food Bank? Oh. A visit to a food bank, who do we support? Our values, our vision. So this is the big thing. I'm uh, funded centrally by the Trussell Church, so is my colleague Nick, to <laughs> carry out the part of my division, which I'll talk about. Also, uh, our money matters partners, uh, they are funded by centrally by the Trussell Trust at this moment. Uh, it's a four year programme about to come to an end in April. And it's about more than food and how you can support it. You might know, you might not know. So here we are. We're a registered charity. We are independent, though we were seeded by the Trust of Trust. So it's a bit like a sort of franchise. Uh, so we have the benefits of their website, their network, their data systems, uh, their technical backup. Uh, but we are actually independent. Our trustees make their decisions um, independently of the Trust of Trust. We have a small team of nine staff. We have an army of over 200 volunteers. Worked at over a thousand hours a month. We're given the volunteering time. But the vast majority of what is done for us is volunteering. And uh, we're supported by our key stakeholders, including businesses. Sorry, this was a business presentation, but many different sectors of the population and uh, Communities locally support us, and we are very grateful for that. We can't just identify one. I must admit, last month when the giving was down, 37% was churches in food and 45 money from churches. So the churches that do it do also support us a lot. And it was started by churches together, but it's by no means just the church project. So it's very much a community wide project. And uh, we work closely with a lot of other cultures. Uh, no, so Pathfinder, we were one of the first Pathfinder food banks, we chose in the first 19, because we are as big as commentary food bank, also we were already doing this financial inclusion, the money matters, which is something that all the food banks are still just coming to do, but we already had that, so uh, we can share best practice in that. So we've been meeting the needs since 2012. A dedicated warehouse. I don't know if um, any of you, I would love you to come and visit our warehouse. You very much get the scale of what we do there and um, meet some more volunteers. That'd be lovely, but I know we're the other end of the city. We have to be in Lurton for this it's based. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a building that we've given by the medical circuit to use. Um, we receive on average 10 tons of food every month. Now, 10 tons every month, and that has been for the last four years, but those 10 tons every month on average actually cost people 25% more. So that is amazing, isn't it, that people have maintained that support. Unfortunately, last year we were giving out 15 tons every month on average, but that's just been since COVID, and we are very fortunate. Other food banks throughout the country have completely run out of donations, but we are relatively well off, but obviously... There is that gap between giving and that. Uh, three day emergency food parcels is emergency food. Uh, it's for those experiencing temporary financial crisis. And in the last financial year, we fed 19,643. All food back guests have a referral from a frontline professional. We do not have enough food and we want to help people properly with professional support so people don't just turn up at a food bank. We are not. That is not a trust or trust remit. That is some trust or trust food banks work that way, some don't. Newcastle food bank do not work that way. We do, we, um, well, yeah, they, they have people that they give food bank vouchers to directly. We did, we used to, especially during lockdown when we could get to their frontline professionals. But the way that we work is that we want somebody to already be in touch with somebody that can support them with their crisis. So they come through a professional referral. It might be somebody at a school, somebody at a doctor's. There is a national helpline, but even the national helpline has information and our office has information that like, you know, oh, um, what's your crisis at the moment? Uh, for instance, at the moment, obviously, we've got people experiencing broken down boilers. So that, you know, after go, getting their kids back to school, Paying for school uniform and everything, they've now got the price for a boiler, and that might be, a, you know, 
that might be the, you know, they can't do without the heat or they can't do without the washing machine. So uh, they come to us and we have one of our uh, agents that we work with is the Green Doctor. And it is sponsored by Caden Gas, which I love the fact that it's sponsored by an energy company. Uh, and we don't, you know, the energy companies, some people say, are doing quite nicely at the price, the um, fuel crisis. But they are, Caden Gas are sponsoring a uh, Green Doctor, and there's things like grants and that available. And money matters are at every session as well to help people. And um, yeah, so a cup of tea and a chat, a warm sure. welcome. Lots of people who've used, uh, who work in these centers, so they've got four volunteers, and some of them had the feedback themselves. Um, three day emergency food, money matters at the most sessions. We have Mind, we have a partnership with Mind, a mental health charity. We're offering uh, something at the moment where people can get a six week program with them which gets them ahead of quite a lot of mental health support. That's not an easy thing to access. And the signposting, the idea is they get that support. These are the different churches. Uh, it's from <coughs> on a Monday, it's at St John's in the Niners League. And on a Friday evening, it's at, is it Thursday evening? It's at St Martyrs. Thursday, yeah. So two ends of the week, of the uh, week are covered from a morning to an evening as well. That's outside work hours. Uh, over 40% of the people we help are working, so it's important that we're uh, accessible outside. So the people, right, so we've already gone about the number for the last year, and 38% for children, it's usually about 40%, maybe, you know, during the last four years, it's been at least 40%. Now, 69% referred to food banks in the top of trust, that's nationally, or disabled compared to the number of people generally in the population, uh, who are disabled is 26%. So a disproportionate number of people who are disabled, addition, um, and also vulnerable people for various other reasons. One in five of the working households, we reckon it's over 40, perhaps 45% in Stoke on trend because unfortunately the nature of employment locally, logistics, uh, those sort of things are often um, zero hour contracts, um, People aren't always particularly well paid. So when they have a gap in their employment, they hit financial crisis pretty quickly. Or also there's the need for transport nowadays that you can't get to your workplace if your car isn't working. So if you have a broke deck, cars are expected to run. So those sort of factors come into play, making more working people locally. And 9% of people who face food insecurity have also experienced domestic violence or abuse. So it's the vulnerable. So who do we support? So we have looked at these. I've got off the press today. Some of them are last year's figures. My colleague um, Nick is the pathway the lead. I am the pathway the second, and she works very closely with referral agents, including your town hall. So here, Speed Off Town Hall issued two hundred and thirty nine vouchers supporting three hundred seventy five adults, two hundred seven children, and Nick is just about to produce data packs for each uh, referral agent so you will know in great detail about your referrals including how much information you've given us about the referral we work really really carefully on getting as much information on what people are having as a gap what's brought you to that crisis and what might help them get through it and the trust or trust is an organization alongside citizen advice they do um, report up to government uh, stats and figures on why people come to food banks. Uh, and we think that's a really important role to play. So uh, that's a quick question yeah. on, that, on that point. You know, sending information back. Mm -hmm. Do you actually take any any information about the tenure of, of people's living living arrangements, whether they be you know, private rented, uh, social rented? Yes. Yeah, so you're for Sophie or whatever. Yeah, so obviously be. people can, you know, we can only have as much information as they're willing to tell yeah. us. Yeah, I'm but sure. yes, that sort of thing is, or whether it's a house, yeah. Yes, definitely. Because, I mean, anecd anecdotally, you hear about people in private rent rented that's been hit with a, a, a large rent increase uh, that they weren't expecting. Uh, people in social, uh, registered social landlords hit with things like 
washing machines breaking down, central heating breaking down, all those the things that can just tip, tip people over the edge. Exactly. So, and I think it's really important that that information does sort of feed back, obviously, to government who are going to be making, who are making uh, significant changes. Yes, any, any detail we have is fed back and not anonymously as statistics. Yeah. Yes, any information, citizen's advice as well feeds back to the government because they obviously get a lot of data like that. So obviously, but people have to be willing to give us that data. And one thing, we're, uh, I'll tell you in a minute, that we're finding, um, it's about your figures, uh, is older people don't want to give us their age, so we don't know how many pensioners we've got. But we have seen on the ground we're getting more and more pensioners and more and more single people. But they're not saying their age. <laughs> we can't say, oh, yeah, so many pensioners. <laughs> Obviously, we see that on the ground and a lot of single people. Caroline, just saying, yeah, I, I know it's important, or important question. If you can save your questions till the end, and we'll if you, no, can, we just okay. wrap up through and then short memories. No, yeah. I like to deal with things. Okay, so um, so for the churches, you'll see that St John's Knife has fulfilled 163 vouchers, which six 263 adults, 163 children. So you see, there's a large proportion of children. And English Martyrs, 411, 661 adults, 412 children. Again, a large proportion locally of uh, people, households with children. But, but between the two centres, their vouchers made up 7% of what we do voucher issues in a year, uh, just so you know that, and uh, which is a 2% increase. So this last year, there's a two percent increase of what you're doing locally compared with our bigger picture for Stoke on Trent and your area, and um, and that was seven point five percent of children, and one point one and seven point seven or one point six percent increase. So the thing that um, the number of vouchers increased, but the number of people stayed about the same. So that's why I'm saying there's more households that are single people, and it's single people of all age groups, but particularly pensioners, and we're very concerned about that. A lot of what we do is uh, benefit support, and we're trying to encourage people to get um, pension credit. And if you know, locally, there's millions of pounds of benefits not claimed, um, and unfortunately, some people don't think that they might be entitled to money or don't want to ask for money. But I always think that getting your tax back, isn't it? <laughs> so, well, this is part of our referral network. We support a lot of other charities. We have 42 charities that we support. So I always like to think, I never shy about asking people to support their product feedback because it, it, it supports actually a very big network of people. And it also supports 42 other charities. If someone at the um, doggy mat hasn't got food, they'll be asking food from us. So it's compassion, it's justice, it's community and dignity. And uh, I know from your starting prayer that it's obviously, you know, something that you would obviously come alongside. So it's a future without the need for food banks. That's where we're working, how we work. Uh, on average, uh, it was, um, it was, people used to come back for, about two and a half food parcels on average. Now it's down to 1.75. That's 80% of people. But it was 75% of people used to come back about two times. Uh, now it's 80% of people come back 1.9. So we are getting people coming back fewer times. But that means 20,000 people, 80% of those, that were first time, which is not a good picture, is it? Let's have a look at the S. Okay, so Pathfinder, I think you probably got the idea that our strategic vision is the end of the need for food banks. Uh, so it's been a four-year program. Um, we have an impact map. Uh, if anybody wants to know more about that side of things, uh, we've got lots of us. It's, it's we want people who are involved to use um, food banks. Uh, We've got a new trustee coming along who's done that. A lot of our volunteers are. We always listen to the people who use financial inclusion and getting people on board to so that big network of people that together we can do it. 
So let's have a look. I think that's good. Yeah, more than food. Just something we do. We do all sorts, and you might want to ask about other things, you know, at another time if you want. And then you, that's the support side. Supermarket collections, um, once you sell food, uh, money uh, to run our centre, run our bands, and volunteering. And um, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I'm I'm big on the prayer support. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if you just want to listen to this, it's a final thought. So sorry, I've probably gone way over my time. I just reduces the questions to no, one. I think there's only about one minute of the, if it, if it will do the link, it'll play. Yes. Press play on the phone. I can leave my details for the Communities have always tried to help each other when there isn't enough money or food on the table. A huge number of people needs the food bank. This is new. Even 10 years ago, it wasn't this way. I guess it's right. There were always be times where some people aren't able to work. But together, we can build a future for that the right sport and that the right time. And where the working communities doesn't move to involve the building system. I've got uh, Councillor Parks first. Sorry, could you fill in the form while we're talking? Okay, sorry, just Adam. Yes. Are you? I'll drive it. Question. Yes. yes. Thank you very much for, for the presentation. Uh, this isn't part of my question, but you try desperately for me to get to feel some sympathy for the energy companies. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 it's not going to happen. Now, you look. Some of your stats are kind of extremely interesting. So. I'm quite shocking, 69% disabled, 40% children. And you made reference to vulnerable. But actually, in reality, that makes complete sense because those are the people that actually see other agencies who can refer them to the food bank. So actually, that's not my concern. My concern is those people who don't seem to get, get the agency support to make the referrals to food banks. And I think that you know that's the missing masses. And therefore, with that in mind, you did say that people who just turned up, you don't. So I'm sure you don't kick them out. Um, can you tell me, but I'm sure you do get people turn up and those that turn up are more likely to be those that don't have any access to other agency support. They've just reached desperation level. Could you tell me what you do do when those people turn, turn up? Because actually it's about changing the idea of vulnerable. We have the traditional vulnerable, which are those most struggling that we would imagine, dis the, the disabled, the very young, the ill. Or, but actually, we have a whole new breed of vulnerable, the unseen vulnerable, masses of them. And I'm wondering how you actually yeah, do right. the more difficult problem of reaching out to them. Yeah, like traditionally families. Yeah. But actually, we're seeing these simple people, it's about more and more simple people and older people. Right, well, what we do is, as say, some of our network is things like doctors as well. So doctors, uh, so, you know, the doctor surgery, someone who's coming along with stress or whatever, and somebody might get help from system advice. Our central, our, our main number, if anybody reads it, uh, in our opening hours, people will be told how to access a feedback. For reaching families, I'm in assembly in schools. So I'm at the Our Lady of Grace tomorrow. I go around schools as much as I can to let family know, but it is always, I think that those are the people, as you say, who might find it difficult to know about help and access help. 
I think that's been a long term thing that the trust of trust just recognised. And even citizen advice, you know, where do you go if you're struggling? Um, I think that there's been, I think, didn't, uh, I think, um, trust of trust did do a campaign, and I think it was just about giving a television campaign. I think it did say about being here for people as well as being a national television company. <laughs> See, um, I'm on social media. Uh, on there, we put out as much help as we can. Uh, you know, all sorts of, of things about um, anything, you know, that we think will help people, uh, including about money matters, that is accessible to other ways of helping people. No, thanks for that. I, I'm just thinking that, you know, we again, we very easily think about those who we, we, we fall within the charitable and the need bracket. But there are so many that are accessing the uh, the food banks now that are working. And we know the stats of the, let's use the NHS, for an example, and the stats of the number of nurses and workers in the NHS. So actually, has the food bank ever actually reached out to employers and yes. not just charities? Yes. I work with businesses. And one of the things from safety businesses is you never know in your workforce. They're a little bit sniffy about it. So they don't think like to think it's in their employers. But it was really good, really big and really good. Um, we were um, charity of the year for an H and R forum, which had a big following of big businesses in Stoke on Trent uh, in the last financial year. And before that, we'd just been approached by um, Emma Bridgewater. You know, Emma Bridgewater was having problems, but well, they wanted to collect for us. But we also presented to them, and they, they at the HR forum, said, well, when we first met the charity, obviously, you know, we thought we wouldn't have the problems. Well, obviously, we've had, you know, problems with um, so many day weeks, you know, short stay weeks, uh, working weeks. But also, they said that they hadn't realised one Christmas, one of their workers hadn't had a proper Christmas, because they were supporting a further part of their family. So when we talk to businesses, we say, you may not know someone in your workforce may be struggling at helping extended family. Uh, you, know, you, you know, you might pay your workforce well. And uh, Vodafone, uh, that presentation was made to Vodafone and we spoke to them about that as well. So I'm, well, I'm, that is part of my remit, is to talk to businesses, uh, talk to as many businesses as I can, but obviously, Lots of them like to be seen to be giving, but they don't always want to know the detail. But you, you have that in any organisation. We, we do, you know, we do have that sometimes in the churches. They want to be seen to be giving, but do they actually? I mean, to me, I think it's, I think it's compassion and part of my Christian faith is that, uh, you know, that um, I wouldn't want someone to be continuously have to ask or be given to, you would want them to try. I personally think that Jesus met people where they were at, not, uh, you know, <laughs> wanted to make a change. Hey, Councillor Howellsworth. Sorry. Yeah, just, um, you say your aim is to remove the need for food banks. I appreciate that the answer is probably and take all night and all tomorrow. But bearing in mind that removing food banks relies on proper housing, decent jobs, and a continuation of jobs. You've been on the Trust and Trust website, haven't you? There's about, there's about 10 things, yeah. Decent contracts. It also requires this country to have senior employment, senior employers, who take account of the, their huge salaries compared to the people who work for them. How on earth are you going to change this country to something that is social? Well, it's actually interesting at that HR forum, uh, there's quite an interesting bunch of people. And one of them said to me, just because some people might think and, you know, that you aren't going to reach that aim doesn't mean that you shouldn't be aiming for it. So that's, that's how we take that. We're not, you know, we know it will take a lot of effort and a lot of people and a lot of changes in mindset, but that doesn't stop us working in that direction. Excellent. Can I want to change the government? 
<laughs> we, we tried that. <laughs> Fortunately, we just have. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, excellent presentation. If you want to put my details on the minute, see how the questions are. Take care. Okay, and I am sure that if anybody wants to visit the food bank on the evening, you'd be most welcome to go in. Anybody wants to volunteer? That's, uh, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much. That was obviously a little bit longer in public participation than normal five minutes, but it's such an important subject that I thought we need to give it uh, uh, due time and credit to it and obviously a period of reflection afterwards. Uh, so moving on to the agenda, item 36, apologies. Uh, Councillors Hawley, Eardley, Holdsworth, Smith. Is there? Oh, <laughs> I, I thought. did, didn't you? Sorry. Uh, Smith, Hart, and Hart. Okay, thank you. And can we looking at declarations of interest? Have we got anybody to declare a disposable pecuniary interest or dispensation? And anyone who wants to declare? Oh, Councillor Rogers. That much expenses on expenses for my actual. Sorry. Yeah, and to declare any other disclosable interests. No. Okay, thank you. So moving on to the minutes, the first one is to approve and sign the minutes of the town council meeting held on Tuesday, September. Do I have a proposer? Councillor Salt, do I have a seconder? Certainly, Mr Mayor. Councillor Jones, just go through them for accuracy. Present, in attendance, public participation. Presentation from James Wakefield from Residential Energy Services. Apologies, declarations of interest, previous minutes, Mayor's communications, standing agenda items, update on outside bodies. Uh, item requested by me in respect to some footpath work on behalf of Staff Small and District Council. Uh, Verbal update on progress with the various projects which we are dealing with at this moment in time. And accounts and finance. That concluded the minutes, so if I may sign them. What's that? Yeah. Councillor Jackson. Yeah, um, um 30, sorry, 32C. There's a there's a figure quoted in there. And when we go back to accounts, could I ask a question? And relate to that figure that links up to the account. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. Excellent. Thank you. Next is the minutes of the... Oh, can we have a show of hands to accept those minutes, please? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next is the minutes of the Recreation and Amenities Committee, held on Tuesday the 10th of September at 7.30. Could I have somebody to propose those minutes? Councillor Jones, could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Stolt. Um, going through them. Present, in attendance, apologies, declarations of interest, minutes of the previous meeting, Progress on the Trent Valley Way, an update on the Nash, on the Knightsley Highways meeting, receive a verbal update on the Garden of Remembrance, to confirm installation of the new bench, to confirm revisions to the allotment policy, to consider management of unadopted alleyways within the town, to explore the possibility of reforming a bit of sports council, and to look for any jobs for Lensman. Uh, there was uh, one confidential item. 
So can we have a show of hands to accept those minutes? Unanimous, thank you very much. We then move on to the minutes of the planning committee held on Tuesday the 17th of September 2024. Can I have a proposal for those planning? Councillor Proudlove seconded, Councillor Salt. Um, present in attendance, apologies, declarations of interest, previous minutes, standing items to consider any pro sites, proposed sites for local listing, consider any implications of national planning policy framework, new planning applications, new decisions and notices received from the district council. Can I have a show of hands to accept those minutes? Councillor Jones, are you accepting it? I wasn't at that meeting, Mr. Mayor, so I wasn't aware of it. So that's unanimous, thank you. Um, and finally, we have the minutes of the Town and Community Committee meeting held on Tuesday, the 17th of September at 6 30 pm. Can I have a proposal for those minutes, please? Councillor Jackson, can I have a seconder for those minutes, please? Councillor Salt, uh, going through those minutes, present in attendance, apologies. Declarations of interest, previous minutes, update on the Civic Awards event, verbal update on UK Shared Prosperity Fund, verbal update on Safe Places, Middle Town Hall, receive an update on the cultural strategy, to consider becoming an age-friendly community as part of the ongoing Over 50s project, to receive a up verbal update on 2024 events. And there was one confidential item. Could I have a show of hands to accept those minutes, please? Again, that's unanimous. Thank you. Next minute. So that's finance one. Yes. So the next minutes are the Finance Strategy and Management Committee meeting held on Tuesday, the 24th of September at 5.30 p.m. Okay. okay. Mr. Mayor, please. Opposed by Councillor Rogers. Can I have a seconder, please? Seconded by Councillor Salt. So going through the minutes, present in attendance, apologies and agreed substitutes, declarations of interest, minutes from the previous meeting, counts and audit matters, receive an update on shared prosperity funding, to approve an amendment to the financial regulations. That's the standard agenda items. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, confidential items. Can I have a show of hands to accept those minutes, please? Again, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Sign So moving on to uh, Mayor's communications, I will be as brief as possible. Uh, September, uh, looking back, very, very busy month. It was the late Mayor's civic service on the 1st. On the 14th, it was the Biddle Classic Vehicle Show, which was also attended by the Deputy Lord Lieutenant uh, Judy Scott Moncrief. Uh, I have to say special thanks to all the councillors and the organisers, the volunteers and the judges. Special mention to uh, our ex-mayor, councillor Jim Davies. It was a truly fabulous event. The weather was wonderful and the turnout was really beyond expectations. And I think we need a new road to put the cars in next year. It's an absolutely superb event. At the same time was also the unveiling of the Masonic bench, which was... Uh, uh, created uh, with Philip Hardacre, who did an absolutely superb job. And again, a shout out to Philip Hardacre. Mosaic. 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 To Philip, because from tomorrow for a short while, he is holding an exhibition at Keel Hall. 
and the preview of that exhibition is on Keel's website and it looks absolutely superb. So if you do get a chance to see the other work which he does, then please go down there. Okay. The following day, I took Councillor Rogers, uh, he has an annual day out, uh, to a coffee and car event, tell by the Deputy Lieutenant who taken us around this one. And the, the weather wasn't as good, was it, to be honest? But it was a, a really nice event, so it was very nice. We then had a civic service at uh, Ashbourne, very nice, which led us on to the Volunteer Civic Awards at Middletown Hall, which is the first time which we've done for a while, slightly different format. Again, big thanks out to the councillors who helped and a massive thanks to the staff who put on an absolute fantastic event. You know, the catering was excellent, the setup was excellent, the, and the people who were invited and who come, it was a really good event, very positive fantastic feedback you know and, and, and i think the benchmark's been set for subsequent years mr deputy mayor so <laughs> it'll, it, it is something to absolutely look forward to it's absolutely brilliant uh for those who went the curry night almost immediately after with uh, the chair of staff small district council that was a, that was a very nice evening which led us nicely into october and again we had a pop-up market down at the methodist church and at the same time we had the arm bombs craft market here two slightly different events but very complementary to one another and both of them showcased the town and both had a very good turnout of people and very good turnout of stalls so absolutely super and fantastic and i finished off in the evening i called into the male voice choir concert at middle high school who who had invited alfreton male voice choir which is really the east midlands twin town of biddle very similar industries very similar demographic uh not quite as good from a quite, quite point of view, but of course I would say that, and I think that's fair. So we shall see. Uh, we then had the civic service for the uh, Cheadle Mayor, and today, a little bit rushed today, I, I actually went to the opening of uh, the Crown Court uh, Michael Miss Term, Michael Miss Term session, which was very interesting at Stafford. So uh, uh, yeah, I was invited by the uh, High Sheriff. So that's something you need to do next next year. Very good. Highly recommend it. Coming up, shout out for Councillor Jones's band still standing. There are a few tickets still left, which is going to be just a few actually in support of uh, Christchurch at Biddle Moor, which is going to be held at the uh, Cricket Club. That's on the 15th of October. And a shout out for, for my next 15th uh, November. 15th November. Yeah. 15th November. 15th November. And a shout out for my event on the 1st and 2nd of November. We, in conjunction, with Leak Blues and Americana, we trying to spread uh, some live music coming over. So we've got two evenings of live music uh, under the banner of Biddle Live. So if you could possibly uh, support the Mayor's Charities and, and attend those and sell, um, bring your friends, I'd be very happy. I'm stressed at the moment. Need to sell some tickets, but I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure we will be there. The other thing which I want to mention is Councillor Hart isn't going through a good time health-wise at the moment. He's currently in, in hospital, uh, I think, awaiting some, treat, some treatment, which uh, is uh, going to be a little bit difficult for a recovery. So we, we, we wish him well. I certainly want to put on the records. I think collectively as a council, yeah. we, we, wish him, we wish him well. Huh? Uh, There's a card going around. Anybody who hasn't signed it, please. Okay. I'll drop it off. It's hours this evening. It's taken to him tomorrow. Yeah. Now... Councillor Saul's got a hand up. It's in conjunction with what we were talking about earlier on. Okay, that's fine. That's taken taken care of. So from uh, my point of view, my personal uh, mayor's communications is down. On the mayor's communications, I do have an emergency item, which is a brief but very important discussion and raising the issue of the potential closure of the leak minor injuries unit and leak. And now that obviously affects, potentially affects uh, uh, patients and residents in Biddle. So before we can do that, uh, um, before we can have a, a short debate on that, is I'd need a proposer and a seconder to go forward with that. Proposed by Jill Salt, seconded uh, by Councillor, Councillor Jackson. So yes, Jill, are uh, you... Do we need a show of hands? Do we need a show of hands? Okay, okay. Can we have a show of hands to accept that, please? Or... I think if Councillor Hawley were here, Mr. Mayor, he'd be telling you that's out of order. Well, 
think it's a, a, re, a reasonable thing to do, and it's my decision it's not, to do. It's, it's not an agenda item. It's not been put, it's, put on the agenda. And it's, it's, it's really. I think you're, you're, you're doing a back door thing here, doing it as part of the mass communications, the greatest respect. It is an important thing. I was at the public meeting last week. I've got a motion coming up at Council of the Week next week as well. Mm. It is an important thing, but we, we're, we're breaking the rules doing it this way tonight. Mm. Well, what we'll do is something requested by Council so on in Sydney, and I think it does have an, an, an impact on, on, on the residents. Order, order. Does have an impact on the rest, and so Council Salt, if you just want to say your yeah, and really, in some respects, we're, we're on YouTube, so it just uh, alerts everybody who doesn't have social media. So for those that don't know, the um integrated care board for Staffordshire is um put out a piece of a consultation exercise about urgent care centers across Staffordshire and their current proposal, although there's con uh, consultation on this proposal is that Leek Borland's MIU will close. <clears throat> and the reasons why it will close are because access to and layout of the building, the access for ambulances is not good enough according to the ICB. There's um, poor X-ray facilities and the systems um, for booking appointments. And they said they could upgrade the facilities, but they also say that it's they need to invest wisely. Um, just as a bit of background, um, we're all worth about £4,000 each in this room to the ICB. Um, so some people have cancer drugs that are worth £17,000 a year, and for that they expect some people not to get sick. So they haven't got much money to play with. So they say that um, they'd rather invest these services in urgent care centres that um, they believe will be more effective. I did a quick straw poll last night on Facebook, just seeing what the general population think, because... Personally, I was under the opinion that I always go to the Haywood. I hate that journey over to Leek. I never go to Leek uh, walking centre. I always go to Haywood. But the strength of feeling out there in the community in Biddle is that people actually um, really value the Moorlands walking centre and they actually use it certainly more than I. So I asked permission um, if I could bring this forward and I do thank the mayor for allowing us to speak in his um, mayor's communications section, um, given that he's raised it in, in that. So um, in order to try and fight this, because it, although it says it's a consultation and no decisions have been made, um, there are rumours that contracts have not been renewed for security and it's um, security services and nurses have been told that they're going to move to the Haywood. And it seems like pretty much a done deal, which is a real shame. Um, so one of the things um, that they said they base this on is that when Leek Morlands was shut over COVID, um, it didn't have any detrimental impact on other services locally, whether that's at Macclesfield, whether it's at UHNM or the Haywood. Um, the, the biggest flaw in their plan, as far as I can see, is that the data was during COVID when we were encouraged not to use any walking centres unless we were pretty much dying anyway. So if you're gonna if you're gonna base your claims on spurious data, then that deserves to be fought. Sadly, um, and the reason why this has been allowed to come forward is the closing date for consultation is the 11th of October, which is we we won't meet again until after that closing date for consultation. So if we didn't discuss this tonight, the opportunity would be gone. Therefore, I'm just making councils aware. Please go online and fill in the consultation documents. And last night, there was also a petition launched, which we hope to submit as part of that consultation that's currently running at about 2,500 signatures. So whilst I can't impose this council rights to the ICB, I can encourage you all to share with your constituents that this is coming up. Ask your constituents over the next couple of days to fill in the consultation documents and please sign the position, petition that it can be submitted as part of the consultation process, because that's all we can do presently. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I don't, um, unless there's any pressing questions or points that anybody else wants to raise, I want, I want to leave to that. It's it's important to get this in the public domain, because like Councillor Salt said, the, the so-called consultation ends on the 11th, and it hasn't really been over signed posted. So this is a uh, an opportunity to uh, squeeze that information in. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item four, the standing agenda items. Uh, the first one is to receive an update on the management of town council assets. Uh, thank you, I haven't got a lot to say on this really. We've got a lease now for the visitor centre with our solicitors and the solicitors have received two draft leases for the toilet blocks as well, which I think probably mentioned uh, in another committee. 
um, when I get his feedback <laughs> and uh, discuss with you further in order to move forward on that. Thanks. Uh, to receive an update on the health and safety activities, including risk risk management. Uh, I haven't got an update on that. We haven't had any, uh, okay. any inspections, as it were. And to receive an update on Biddle Works Together project? Yeah, so at the moment, the different groups in the town are putting together what they hope that they can deliver during the colder months. So hopefully by the time we have our next meeting, uh, which is in just a couple of weeks, then we'll have a draft um, document, which is similar to what we've done in previous years, which is kind of timetable for the week and what's on offer for people. So um, lots of people actually are standing up uh, doing their thing with that, which is really positive. Yeah. If there are any funding shortfalls on that at all, then there are quite a few district councils, I'm sure we've got some funds left. And I've got uh, a small amount of funding left for my county councillor fund as well, so just bear that in mind. Councillor Jackson, how do you handle it? Yeah, thank you, Jack. It really is a pleasure to chair this group. This group of people come together um, and the busy people doing the stuff that they do volunteering and then give up more time to come to a meeting as well. Uh, it's good to be commended. So I just like to place on that group some of my thanks for being a share of that group for the work and effort that all these groups are putting in. And as the mayor's alluded to, any shortfalls in funding, uh, I'm sure we can uh, sort of sort something out. But as, as I understand it, there's no shortfalls at the moment. I think it's fully funded. Excellent. Councillor Proud, love, and then there's no other hands showing. We'll move on. And just a quick, a quick one. I attended a, a workshop at Stoke on Trent City Council last Thursday. Nothing to do with a merger with Staffordshire Moorlands District Council, by the way. Um, and um, uh, the the roundtable discussion was around community governance. Um, is the the issue one of the issues that got stated was that there's a, a gap there. There's, there's the city council. Um, there are community groups and organisations, and there's no additional layer of local government there like we we have around here with the, with the town council. And um, one of one of the uh, one of the people on, on the, the round table I was on was John Rouse, the, the city director. And when we were to I pointed him in the direction of of, of how things work in, in Biddle, particularly the group that works together project, and he seemed quite interested in that. So. I don't know if that's uh, something they'll, they'll pick up for a, a conversation at some point in the future. Lovely, thank you. Um, moving on to receive an update on outside body meetings attended since July 2024. Any uh, updates, any outside bodies? Councillor Rogers. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Hart and myself went over to the meet a couple of weeks ago to the Morris Assembly. There was a presentation there by Staffordshire Police. Part of the presentation, um, I asked how good the CCTV is in the Mullins. I can't really say it on YouTube. If anybody would like to speak to me after, I can tell you, they gave me an honest answer. At least it was an honest answer. And uh, if you want to speak to me, I can tell you what the answer was. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, item 42, Accounts and Finance, to approve the accounts to be paid in October 2024. You've got the uh, sheets in front of you. Firstly, expenditure over £500. It's Councillor Jackson. Yeah, um, about halfway down the profile, it's, the, it's to do with the bill for the... So, sorry, uh, to do with the, the miners' lamps. Uh, we've got 28000 there. The actual last estimate that we've just approved on on the minutes from the last one was twenty thousand. Is to, yeah, it, is that eight thousand difference? Is that the eight thousand SNDC are paying, or is it just a, it's just gone up in the price? It was just that. It's VAT. That's that. So that so the twenty eight there is including the VAT figure. Right, and the other one wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. That please took partially anyway. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Holdsworth. Just want to add to that, actually, cool. what I wanted to talk about. I'd just like to know who approved £34,350 for three miners' lives. We did. The council did. The council knew the cost was going to be £34,350 and we approved it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
So, moving on. Expenditure less than £500. Anything to raise there? And to approve any supplementary accounts. Are there any supplementary accounts? Yeah, everyone should have got a copy of those, I think. Okay. So, supplementary accounts which have received a copy. Expenditure over £500. Expenditure less than £500. <clears throat> So, taking on block, can I have a proposal for those accounts? Those by Councillor Salt, then we seconded by Councillor Jones. Can I have a show of hands to accept those accounts? Any abstentions? Councillor Holworth has abstained. And that concludes the meeting this evening. Thank you very much.